Well, hey neighbors. Welcome to this edition of Shed Shop Outdoors. You can't see me. I'll turn you down in just a minute. Neighbors, I want to sit down because Chainsaw Redeemer is worn out and tired. I went to steal today. Neighbors, neighbor Eric, neighbor John Luna, neighbor Mike. Uh, Let's see, who else? No, nope, neighbor Eric's got two. So that's why four saws. Oh, and I already talked to neighbor Nathan. I spent $500. This is what I got, neighbors. They discontinued fuel lines for the steel 028s. They discontinued the intake boots. Uh, I got my one grommet, but the flange that goes inside the boot, uh, they, they are on back order. And so I got neighbor Mike's saw in front of me, which is getting blowback, and I've checked everything. And when I do the brake test, the brake parts cleaner test, and the only place I can get the saw to die is blowing it behind the carburetor. And now that could be it's sucking the fumes from the brake fluid in through the port of the Venturi at the back of the carb. But I don't think that's the case. I've done the oil test on the entire gasket uh, on both seals. And I've, I've pumped up to like 12 pounds, which is way more than this saw should need uh, to, to be vacuum pressure tested at. And the only thing, I've tried one other used intake boot. It didn't solve the problem. I've tried other used uh, washers here. It didn't solve the problem. And so I thought to hell with it. I'll just replace the boot and both the washer and the flange uh, but neighbors they don't have the flange they got the washer so the only thing i can do right now is i want to show you what the saw is doing okay i'm going to start the saw and so show you where what i mean by blowback and then uh you can't spray brake parts cleaner behind the flywheel on this saw it's sealed into the crankcase it's got a it's got a little groove there that it seals into and so to get brake parts cleaner behind there to see if somehow that's where the leak is only when the saw is operational uh is impossible but like I said I can I can spray carb or brake parts cleaner back here and this saw starts to die and so I'm gonna start to saw and I'm gonna show you exactly what's going on okay neighbors um, hopefully I can I can get a piece of cardboard or something here I should have thought about it um, we'll just rip a piece off I even got a block of wood I just want to show you that it's getting wet you'll even be able to see it with my hand so yes I have to pull cord left-handed most of the time Oh, you know what, neighbors? This choke's not going to be on because I forgot I left the air filter loose. And the choke is, is incorporated into the air filter. So we got to fix that. Saw's not going to start without choke. Or at least it's not going to start very easily. <laughs> and it'll probably flood if... It might flood now. And then, unfortunately, this video will be trash. Well, my scrunch is worn out here. Let me get a different one. There we go. That's butter. Okay, neighbors, let's try that again. It does appear the choke came on. I gotta take the air filter off. Sounds like it's all fine, right? Well, it's not.
that neighbor is right behind the carb and I barely sprayed any. And so, so a lot of people will tell you, let me explain the science to you real quick. I, I really think this is good education. And this is the thing, buying a used saw, neighbors, this is something you really should take your air filter off if the saw starts and see if it's blowing fuel back. Because one, your rings are bad if it is, uh, potentially. Or two, you've got an air leak for sure somewhere. Um, just because a saw runs good uh, for a minute or two, I got a guy just brought me a 290, he paid, uh, or an 029, he paid $275 at a pawn shop. Air filter's garbage. Uh, and it's got blowback. Now that could be that it just needs a carb rebuilt, but it might be leaking air too. Neighbor Pete's, his is doing the same thing, neighbors. It's behind a carburetor. Now let me explain the science to you, okay? I wanna get you, I wanna get you zoomed in. I'm gonna let you look over my shoulder here, class, okay? I'm gonna move you, you're gonna have to stand up, class. Okay, here we go, neighbors, listen. Pay attention to your carburetor right here, right? This is called your Venturi, okay? this whole port right here going in through your your saw okay your venturi is supposed to suck air from here now a lot of times you get blowback because you have worn out rings okay and that causes too much fuel uh, there's not enough compression to pull the, the air through properly okay but the problem is if you think about the science of this okay if you're pulling air from back here behind your carburetor. Let me make sure you can still see, darn it. I'm gonna drop you down, class. Boy, you're just all crooked. So sorry, neighbors. I did you dirty. It's not a good angle here. Let me lower you a little bit. There we go. That's better. Okay, neighbors, so if basically your engine's supposed to be pulling air from back here to pull your fuel in, we're going to go ahead and take this carburetor off, and I'm going to show you uh, uh, an even better explanation of what I'm talking about, because I'm going to show you close up where your fuel blows into your carburetor on this model. Um, some models, it's in the center of the car, but it's still the same principle, neighbors, okay? This is good stuff. This is good stuff. I'm glad I'm learning this stuff. Nobody seems to have answers for me, so I just figure stuff out myself. That's how I taught myself small engines. Okay, neighbors, I didn't get a thing for my my uh, fuel line here to stop it off, and so I don't want to get squirt with fuel. <clears throat> yeah, see, we got plenty of uh, pressure in our tank, which is good. Um, so we know it's not our tank vent issue. Uh, we know we're getting fuel and i know it's riched out neighbors i understand it's set rich but i have I've, I've messed with this carburetor for over an hour and i still get blowback i've tried different carburetors on this saw and i still present this blowback and so i cannot i cannot let neighbor mike have a saw like this it's not going to work for him it's not going to do its job okay neighbors my theory is my theory is this look this might blow fuel still yep hang on neighbors Okay, I was hoping I could leave the cap loose. This, this cap sets pretty decently high on this tank. So we're not losing any, any fuel. All right. Here's your carburetor, neighbors. Listen. It's so sunny I can't see. This is your intake side, okay? And this is your outside where your air filter goes over. This right here, this little jet blows fuel into the Venturi. This is your Venturi, okay? So when you open your throttle... Okay, wide open, fuel blows down, and air is supposed to suck from back here to pull the fuel through and push it into the motor right here, neighbors. Okay, now if you're getting air pulling in back here, think about it. Instead of back here, the air is not pulling from back here. Instead, it's pulling from here. It can't pull the fuel through. And so the fuel comes back this way, okay? And so everybody tells me, no, nope, this wouldn't cause blowback. When you talk to all the guys that claim they know everything on arborsite.com, uh, that they say this doesn't cause blowback. But I solved it on another saw, and the saw stopped having blowback. I just replaced the flange, the grommet, and the intake boot, and it solved the problem. On this one, we don't have this flange. These are on back order. I can't believe it. I think this, this little flange, I see how flat it is. It's supposed to be flanged out more, okay? And it's not. Okay, neighbors? And look, this is all wet back here. Yeah, we sprayed fluid, but the fluid should not be able to get in there, okay? It's all wet. It's all wet, neighbors. 
our intake boots wet our grommets wet and so i'm hoping that if i just replace this one and i'll try one more different flange i don't have any new intake boots i have an aftermarket one but i don't trust it it's too thin and it's it's very flimsy and it's just i can tell it's very poor quality so i don't do aftermarket boots there's only two left online um, but it's from a guy that I absolutely refuse to buy from him. I just I just can't um, I don't know. He's just a not a, not a good guy and normally I would say, you know I still love him and buy from him, but this guy I just I just refuse now I could get the mics out and measure this But the thing is this has got scratches and nicks in it And I really neighbors I think I need the other one and I think I need a new boot I look at the thickness of these and no I'm not miking it but I don't see a difference neighbors I just don't I don't think this will solve our cause I really don't and so I might have to redneck neighbor Mike Saul because he doesn't it's not sentimental to him um well that grommet did get on them bolts a lot easier I have been struggling with his grommet oh dang don't touch your hot motor neighbors that's not smart okay I still really want to replace this flange. Okay, so I'm going to try and find another one of these. I, I know I've got plenty of them. I just don't have a new one. But I'm going to try and find one that, that basically, neighbors, this is supposed to be flanged right here more in this crease. Right here. So that when you push it into the boot and you push the carb against it, it creates a seal inside the boot between the boot and this flange. Okay? I don't know where the air is getting in around here. You know, I just don't know where. Um, and so I've got to solve the problem. We'll try real quick with this flange again. And that way we know, hey, if it doesn't fix, if it's not fixed right now, I really think it's that flange, neighbors. It just pushes in too deep. I think it just pushes in too deep. And it doesn't push the rubber, rubber out enough against this grommet. Okay, but we'll try. We'll try and then I'll go hunt for a new one. Whoops. Trying to hook my fuel line up to my impulse port. Good old O28s. It is just pouring oil everywhere. Huh. Gotta love it. But at least they don't burn up because they don't oil enough. Unless somebody's not paying attention. Newer saws. They just don't oil anymore. Okay, so I just all I did was put my car back on. I'm gonna hook my throttle back up. It's pretty easy. I just press my throttle in on my carb, lift my line in place, my throttle lever, lever and boom. Okay. I've even thought about, you know, uh, really wrenching down on these bolts, but I just don't like to. I've even thought about that, but then you restrict your 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 um your uh carb from sealing or your your air filter from sealing against your carburetor see so you can't do that to help tighten it i could i can't even use small washers unless they fit inside there um and i i don't have any that fit inside there as well as fit over this nut i suppose i could have looked for some but i don't think it will help i don't think wrenching down on these harder than they're supposed to be is going to help in fact i think it hurts So we'll try it real quick. Don't know what else to do. What I do know is I've tested his carburetor, and like I said, I've tried other carburetors on the saw. Didn't work. It could very well be that the plastic is just worn down too. I don't know. I, I haven't been able to find a cause as to how air is getting in there. I really think it's the flange because even now I'm looking and I can see space between my flange and my venturi. But it should seal around the outside of the carb as well. So I'm just looking. I'm wondering if maybe, just maybe, this isn't the right carb for the saw, but I believe it is. It's the right size. Everything lines up right. So, neighbors, all we can do is try. We've got it tightened down. We've got it snugged up. Let's snug it up even. I, I don't like going any tighter than that. That's plenty tight. Yeah, that's very tight. So, 
This all should start with one pull. Hopefully. Oh, no, I took the carb off. We're going to have to go and choke it all the way again with our wet air filter. I don't love it, but we're, I'm, I'm going to have to choke it because if I don't, well, guess what, neighbors? The saw is not going to start right. It's going to be real hard to start. It's going to take a lot, a lot of pulls, and, and neighbor Matthew can't pull cord a lot. I'm disabled. That's the biggest thing that puts me out of commission is on days I've got to pull cord a lot. I pulled a lot of cord yesterday, and I'm really struggling today. Okay, neighbors, I'm just going to go out of view and start the saw here. Oh, hell. I guess I should tighten my fuel cap, damn it. Here we go. Try again. to take the filter off I've got to get this saw tuned in better turn the idle up to help us I should be able to, to start it like a man saw that is hold the throttle and pull cord at the same time and it should start in theory Still getting blowback. And I can't lean it out anymore because it won't run. Okay, now it's all. It doesn't want to start at all. I'm looking, I heard a gentleman today tell me something, and yet now I see the piece he's talking about. But I've tried a different carburetor, unless that was worn out on that one too. I'm wondering if it... Uh, you mentioned the little clip that's in there, a little piece of plastic. I don't suppose I think that's it, but I am one more time going to try a different carburetor. Just one more time, just for poops and giggles. And then we'll see what happens. Okay, neighbors, that's going to be it. This is going to be continued uh, diagnosing uh, blowback on steel 028. This probably be video number three, I think, by now.